Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's GTA 5 video, I'm going to be telling you about 20 things you need to know before you end up purchasing the Rune Zaba. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly in Grand Theft Auto Online. So this is by far one of the most interesting vehicles that Rockstar has added. And I don't even really know how to describe it. Is it a giant ATV? Is it a giant like tank with monster truck wheels? What the heck is this thing? I'm not even sure what it's based on, although I'm pretty sure I've seen it on an episode of Top Gear, but I can't remember. Regardless, if you're wondering how much this vehicle is, it has a buy it now price of $2,400,000 and a trade price of $1,800,000 if you end up using it during the Diamond Casino heist. And on the in-game website, it shows that it's a one-seater, but it is a four-seater. You can get two people in the back, two in the front. And again, this is a very interesting vehicle. So let's just get this in the LSC. And I was actually shocked when I brought this into the Los Santos Custom Shop that it had 19 options of customization. I thought this, you know, tank, whatever it is was gonna have like three things we could upgrade. Not the case. So you can start with bumpers and there's three things you can do at a primary metal or secondary bar. You can also do the same thing on the rear bumper. And I don't know if I chose the wrong Los Santos Custom Shop. I probably did because of how big this vehicle is. But regardless, after that we move on to exhaust. There's a lot of exhaust options as well and I apologize for exhaust being tough to see. There isn't a great way in which you can do it in the Los Santos Custom Shop, but there's a lot on the left and the right, trucker style ones. There's also a handful of fender upgrades too, and this intrigued me because a lot of the fender upgrades had extra lights on them, and you guys know how picky I am about lights, and this one even had an alternative light color, which was kind of like orange. It was pretty cool, and we'll test if those actually work when we get this vehicle out of the LSC. There's also some grill upgrades you can do too. You could add a tow hook, a winch, you could add both. You could even include an open panel in there also. So lots of nice upgrades that you can end up doing. There's also a lot of liveries on this vehicle. At first I was disappointed because I thought it was just like all the old gun running liveries like the Zancudo camo, 90 sandbox, stuff like that. But it also turns out that this car has all the other like interesting liveries like the pink and green one yellow and blue camo, blue and green, hunting, blue tartan, Santo Capra coins, uh, Sasanta Nove, and even the money one, Dala Dala. So I wonder if Rockstar will eventually unlock those for this vehicle when it does end up arriving in the game. Now after your liveries, you've got your primary color and your secondary color. Your primary color is going to have an impact on the entire body of the car, and your secondary color is going to have an impact on all the accents, like the little latches and even the shocks and the suspension underneath. So you can really have a lot of fun combinations here. So pick and choose wisely. There's also a lot of roof options as well. I was kind of shocked by that. Uh, you can add a handful of things like small racks. You can add a big rack in various colors and whatnot. You can also upgrade the roof panel if you want, making it secondary carbon fiber or black plastic. From there, we need to go on to the racks where you can add a lot of cool things like trenching kits, oil cans, fuel cans. I went with the fuel cans to sort of give it a more like rustic look. You can also change up the side panels too on both sides, the left and the right side. That's something I almost forgot about here. So don't forget to do both sides if you'd like to change them. Now, after that, that is pretty much it as far as inside the Los Santos Custom Shop. I tried to see if you could change the tires. The answer is no. You can only make them bulletproof. We'll test this out in a little bit. Now, I don't know if everyone is going to have this issue or if it's a single player problem, but when I was trying to leave the LSC, I physically could not get this car out of it. Like it was too big. It was, seems like it was catching some like invisible wall trying to leave. Like, I legitimately thought I was stuck in here, and I had to, like, turn my car all the way around just to get it out. So I don't know if everyone's going to experience that problem or if it's just this one at Beaker's Garage. Either way, that was kind of weird. Now, if you're wondering if you can change the color of the stock rims, the answer is no. You also technically can't change the tires, but with some mods, you can. And with supercar sports car wheels, they do look a little ridiculous on this vehicle. I'm not going to lie to you. However, the new off-road wheels look amazing on this car. So it's kind of a bummer that Rockstar doesn't let you like change the color 
and the tire of the wheel itself because I ended up keeping this off-road look. I thought it looked so great. So uh, that is a little bit unfortunate, but if Rockstar have a specific set of tires, maybe it's for a reason. Now also the passenger and driver side doors obviously open, but uh, also in the back, those side vents, they open too, and like the back where extra people will actually sit. So pretty cool if you were opening the doors for like a car show or whatnot. Now getting on to the lights, I'm kind of disappointed with the lights. So it does have a bright set of lights that activate. It's that LED bar at the top, but the LED bars on the fenders, they don't do anything. So it's like Rockstar decided to make one of them work, but the other pair doesn't work. That just seems a little bit strange to me, but at least those default lights on the top do end up getting brighter when you turn on the bright lights. Now, another thing that's interesting about this vehicle is it looks like it has some bullet resistance, at least on the windows. So I can't give you like a 100% accurate estimation of how many bullets I think it can absorb, but I think it was around 10 or 11 before the glass ended up breaking, and that's when your player would start to receive damage. So that's actually pretty cool that you've got a, I guess, armored styled vehicle that will protect you from bullets or stray fire when they do end up hitting your vehicle. And I even tested that it has some explosive resistance as well. Now, I've heard reports that the armor is insane and that it can withstand seven RPG hits without blowing up. Now, those are just reports that I've heard. You can use this currently in the Diamond Casino Heist. Uh, as one of your escape vehicles. So seven RPGs, that is insane. Uh, hopefully that means that you'll be able to survive quite a bit of the free roam madness uh, in online. Now, a couple of other things about this vehicle that you might find interesting. It's actually amphibious. So that's right, for whatever reason, this vehicle can go in the water. Like, I don't know how it works or how it functions, what's the physics or engineering behind it, but this vehicle can like float and go in the water. Now it's not super fast, but if you are sort of in an emergency or you need a vehicle that floats and can, you know, is amphibious, well, there you go. The Zaba is now an option for you. So again, this must be based off of a vehicle in real life that has the ability to do this because this just doesn't seem like it's a thing you would want to do with this car. And really last but not least, the final thing I can tell you about this vehicle is the performance. It is absolutely atrocious. This is one of the worst vehicles to drive of all time. If I had like a description for it, it's like a compact monster truck on ice skates. I mean, this thing slips and slides all over the place. It doesn't turn well, it doesn't climb well, it's not fast. I don't know why Rockstar made this vehicle so poor. I guess they figured, well, if we're going to give it like bullet resistant windows and explosive resistant armor, then I guess we kind of got to make it slow. But like when you compare it to some of the other vehicles like the Night Shark and the Insurgent that pretty much do the exact same thing minus the amphibious ability, like what's the point of this vehicle? It's just really expensive and new. So honestly, I know this vehicle isn't out yet. I'm definitely giving it a little bit of buyer beware. Now it had more customization than I thought, but that still wasn't all that great for me. There's a lot of cool cars that have customization, but this one, I don't know. It's, it's just such a pain to drive. I would never use it in free roam. So honestly, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. And what's nice about this is even though this hasn't technically been released in online, because you can actually use it as one of the getaway vehicles in the Diamond Casino Heist, I'm sure some of you guys already have experience using this vehicle. Uh, in fact, one of the last heists that I ended up doing, we used it as our getaway car, and it was tricky. Like, if you thought just driving around from point A to point B is hard, uh, try getting rid of five stars. It's definitely not fun. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. What has your experience been like so far with the Rune Zaba? Uh, again, you can let me know down there. And also, when this vehicle does arrive, are you going to be buying it? Are you going to be staying away from it? Will you wait till it goes on discount or sale? Uh, let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you want to stay up to date on all the latest GTA and all the Diamond Casino Heist videos that I'm going to be doing here on my channel over the next couple of days and weeks. 
And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work, and if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.